Hello and welcome to... I don't know what this is. This is going to be like a roadmap, roundup, uh, plus a monthly report uh, overview or whatever. Uh, I'm wearing the same t-shirt because I have recorded like two or three videos. I'm not sure how much time I'll have today, but uh, I have recorded a lot, a lot of videos the same day. So yeah, I do change my t-shirts, but if I record them the same day, like what's the point in uh, that's just being retarded. Anyway, let me roll the intro and let's talk about Star Citizen. Hello, my name is Grumpy. Okay, so there have been two uh, important updates, one of which is going to be the roadmap uh, roundup. We're going to go through that one first, and then we had a Star Citizen monthly report. Now, uh, I think that this video is going to air on Friday. Uh, I mostly air the outside inside Star Citizen um, series or whatever uh, on Friday. But I, from what I know, there shouldn't be one, uh, like there shouldn't be an inside Star Citizen, so I can't really make a response to it. So yeah, you're just going to watch me like slowly read and fuck up every pronunciation uh, in the monthly report. So yeah, have fun with that, I guess. Anyway, let's switch to the screen and let's see the roadmap roundup. The camera, uh, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. So, uh, notable changes. Uh, all these things were added to the progress tracker. Can you see them? Yes, you can. Okay, so do I have any porn in the concealed, like in the background? No, I do not. So it's gonna be really easy to edit. Anyway. <laughs> uh, vehicle tractor beams this has been like added and taken out and added to the fucking progress tracker like this is the second time they added this they actually like showcased uh the tractor beams uh half a year ago and uh they were like they already had models on on ships like uh instead of i i know that it was like 315 uh, a, uh, the ship, like uh, 325, whatever, the 300 series uh, of Origin. So it had, like, instead of the uh, nose size 4, it had, or size 3, it has uh, it had, like, a tractor beam. So, yeah, they, they already... They already had this, but then they like took it out and then it's just back on the progress tracker. So that, yeah, I don't know. Artificial gravity. Now this is pretty important. Implementing the dedicated functionality for items controlling the gravity per room no, so per a room for ships, outposts, and stations. So outposts, I'm not really sure how that's gonna work, but stations, yeah, of course. This also includes player controls as part of engineering gameplay. And this is the first time that we're actually hearing about engineering gameplay and that they're actually working on it because this is the first thing that they're gonna work on. And uh, yeah, this is a huge thing and yeah, that, that's it. It's a huge thing, and I can't wait for it. Uh, I think it's gonna be, like, broken as fuck as always, uh, as with everything that, that we have, and you're just not gonna have gravity, or the gravity is gonna be, like, 10,000 times <laughs> higher than it should. But, hey, uh, fine. Fine. Uh, let us see it, and uh, let us try to enjoy it, I guess. Fire rats, armor, uh, whatever, that's just a pyro gang, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the armor is gonna be uh, nice. Like, the Nine Tails armor is amazing, the 890 jump mission guys, that armor is fucking amazing, so this one is gonna be amazing too. Uh, shopkeeper outfits, like, who gives a fuck? Like, uniforms for shopkeepers, whatever. Unified item ports. Now, renaming and standardizing character item ports to properly represent their capabilities. This includes expanding their capabilities to allow for more types of equipment to be used on the current item ports. What the fuck are item ports? Like, I, I don't know, I gotta Google it. Give me a second. Okay, so I have Googled it and I still have no idea. Uh, I think that this has like a lot to do with like, in my mind, I imagine it being like uh, a thing where you attach the backpack. So instead of uh, that being uh, reserved only for the backpack, maybe you're going to carry something else. So that's item ports for characters. Like that's the only thing that like instead of just uh, wearing a gun, maybe you can uh, get something else to, to hang there. Like that's what I understand. Like, 
but like I didn't find the the, the word item port uh, in anything that like has anything to do uh, with gameplay and uh, games and programming and all that. So I have no idea. Uh, swimming tier zero, dudes, it's happening. It's fucking happening. No, let me switch. It is fucking happening. Like after swimming after swimming your 890 jumps are gonna float on water mark my words 890 jump swimming swimming comes first then you have the 890 jump that's gonna float on water then you jump from the 890 jump hence the name 890 jump and you swim around and you go to Hurston, no, maybe not Hurston, because like Hurston's water is completely uh, fucked up. But maybe you go to Microtech, and because like it has a river, a singular uh, river with a smallish lake uh, at the end. And then you, uh, is is that lake even fucking big enough to park an A ninety jump inside of it? Uh, uh, whatever, whatever. You go there and you swim. And you swim and like emerging gameplay guys like come on <laughs> okay to be honest th this is a cool addition like we we need things like that uh, for the game to actually work we need to be able to swim through rivers we need to like even though we're gonna always be in our ships and all that but yeah it's it's a cool addition and um yeah it's gonna uh have features such as entering exiting and the drowning include support for hazardous liquids that can damage or kill the player and other characters so yeah you're not going to be able to swim in lava probably maybe well we'll see uh ai utility implementing the utility ai be behavior uh, the ai will drive vehicles pick up haul and stow carryables uh, as well as manage the vehicle's cargo bay and inventory okay that's fine that's that's cool that's cute um AI commuter. Implementing the commuter AI behavior into the game, uh, the AI will search for means to travel to their destination uh, while waiting for a vehicle to, to arrive. Uh, the AI will eat, drink, and check no the notice boards or timetables. I mean, pff, okay, uh, that's gonna add some immersion to, like, but it's like... I don't know, just give us more fucking gameplay loops. We don't fucking care about the commuters, dude. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, environmental space missions. Okay, now we are talking. Implementation of new missions and scenarios that the player will encounter as they wander around an area of space. So these are gonna be, like, deep space missions, I, I guess. And uh, that's cool because we have a lot of uh, unused space, even on planets, but, like, in space, Jesus Christ, like, we need shit to do. New interdiction scenarios. Uh, adding new variations. Okay, we already have this, but it's just gonna be, like, different difficulty levels, and that's it. Physicalized weapon handling. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna be better uh, weapon handling. Uh, I mean, okay, okay, I, I gotta talk about this. Yeah, I gotta talk about this. So, it's gonna be better, it's gonna be more like, like real life. Although, is it still gonna de-equip and unequip and re-equip and uh, equip? Like, is it, is, is it still gonna be janky as it is right now? Or maybe you fix that first and then, like, you do this. Although, I don't even know if I can see the point in doing this because, like, we already, we already have a really good, like, the gunplay in this game when it works, it's actually pretty good. Like, compared to other games, yeah, it is, it is pretty good. So, like, tactile look and feel to weapon handling, uh, adding that, okay fine but like do we need it not really uh we need other things uh, before that but i guess that like squadron 42 needs that first and all of this uh nonsense like uh the commuter or or whatever all of those are just for like squadron 42 so yeah whatever anyway uh we gotta talk about the monthly report so this is mostly what they already have done during uh the last month so in June, a narrative-focused AI designer uh, joined the team and began improving the current shopkeeper. Shopkeeper, <sighs> expanding the variety of voices and dialogue. Great. 
Um, the team also set up the leisure behavior AI to use the Moby class from different usables. I mean, dude, like, whatever. Like, literally, whatever. They're still gonna be in the fucking ceiling. You're just gonna see their fucking legs, like, sticking uh, like this. If you, if, you, if you see the camera, it's gonna be basically like this. Or they're just gonna fucking ascend, and they're gonna be broken, and the bartender is not gonna fucking work, and all of that. Like, first fix the game, and then do all of this shit. Uh, if it's even, like, important. And it's really not. Like, compared to other things, to, like, gameplay loops, this shit is completely not important but for squadron 42 it probably is uh ai tech one of ai tech's focuses in june was optimizing and <laughs> improving alpha 317.2 uh well maybe on like internal play tests like maybe there you saw that you did a good job but like uh yeah yeah like we 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 played 317.2 and no no bueno no 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 um, this involved adding functionality for the planetary nav mesh. They hit trees, they flip over, they land, sometimes they land, and then uh, people uh, don't, like AI reinforcements, like they don't fucking exit the vehicles. Uh, nav mesh, I think it's just for one planet and that's it. And <laughs> whatever, dude, like it's nice but it's a tier zero again it's one of those it's always a tier zero this is the first iteration of the nav mesh and reinforcement features but we are extremely proud and excited to see them available to all of you okay work included on the locomotion code this included improving the transitions between different locomotion states by further developing the initial implementation of pose matching Okay, so they're not gonna be just like uh, here and then twitch and like uh, uh, be janky and do something else and then like uh, it, it's gonna be like more uh, fluid and like it should, right? So yeah, this is, I mean, it, it's such a small thing to even fucking put here, but yeah, good job, I guess. They also implemented linear speed warping, including a way to dynamically calculate a spline into a specific pose. For example, the enter position of a usable. Uh, blah, blah, I'm not a fucking programmer, I don't fucking care. For 3D navigation, the team improved the implementation of Orca 3D for collision avoidance and continued to develop break splines. Like, I mean, okay, whatever, dude. Uh, for trolley, <laughs> trolley use, the team focused on tasks to allow an NPC using a usable, okay, in this case a movable object, to be dynamically attached to another usable, such as a parking spot. Uh, they also supported the trolley lightweight updates and tweaked path following to allow it. <laughs> okay, I mean, that, uh, once you see it in, in the game, you're gonna realize that this is like, whatever seriously like whatever like you're gonna pass right next to an ai that's gonna be pushing a trolley like a good ai and um, ai i mean npc and uh you're gonna look at him and you're gonna look at the ace of terminal because you want to claim your ship and you're gonna be like whatever dude you, you're not gonna care ai vehicle features in june ai vehicle features enabled the ai to control different ship modes for example this allows npcs to switch to the correct mode when quantum jumping or using missiles. So AI is gonna quantum jump now? So does that mean they're, they're gonna run when we do like bounty missions? Uh, they, they were using missiles uh, before, but they weren't using any modes, I guess. I don't know, I don't know. Animation, oh, the best part. Throughout June, the facial animation team worked on outlaw characters, rescue and transport missions, AI bartenders and player emotes. They also supported Pyro with motion capture mocap alongside the narrative team. Regarding mocap, the new studio is progressing well. I mean, I, I know that this is like a letter, but like, it's not like I'm on a vacation and you were just like, the new kids are not gonna understand, but like once upon a time we did send letters to each other and then like, Hey mom, I'm doing well. I hope that you're doing well too. And then you send 
a letter and then you get a letter from your mom's uh, while you're on vacation and she's like hey son yeah i'm doing well i hope you're doing well too tell me if you're doing well and then you make the f- first fucking letter again basically and, sa- and th- that's the whole fucking correspondence but uh yeah uh okay whatever dude uh art characters june saw the character art team further develop the frontier outfits okay that's that's gonna be good i i actually like it's such a small thing but it adds to the immersion and it adds to like a uh, uh, variety uh with like the different outfits and uh the ponchos and all that that, that they showed us already so yeah this is this is gonna be this is gonna be fun now let's talk about this ships but first i gotta get a c- cigarette because i'm gonna get really pissed off last month the uk based ship art team continued developing the battle merchantman's exterior the whole two of them the whole two fucking uk based ship like it's not a whole fucking team it's two people dude significant progress was made towards finalizing the larger forms as well as figuring out some of the finer details, such as intake design, decorative patterns, and the cargo ramp. The team also, now fuck the band of merchantmen, cause yeah, like it's just two people, it's, it's gonna take them 18 months for, for that one. Uh, the team also progressed with the final art pass on an unannounced vehicle, which should be wrapped up this month. Remaining tasks include polish before the level of detail and damage passes unannounced vehicle and it's probably gonna be an lti token and it's probably an x1 or something like that i don't know work on the argo srv moved into the gray box phase on the exterior the team completed the hull cargo lift it has a cargo lift an entrance lift i completely fucking forgot and made significant progress on the nozzles and landing gear inside gray boxing continued for the cockpit seat and dash board i guess um development of another unannounced ship continued which is currently in gray box june's focus was on the landing gear exterior doors cockpit dash and pilot seat now unannounced ship that is continued now this is gonna be a weird one because like here they said a vehicle and they didn't say uh that it has like a cockpit or whatever but uh here we know that it's a ship so what kind of a ship what is it uh i mean it's not an rsi orion for sure it's not an endeavor uh surely it's what what could it be it's probably gonna be some like one to two man ship because it has exterior doors it has a cockpit it has a pilot seat that like implies that like exterior doors cockpit and pilot seat it implies that it it has like some kind of a interior and then you have the landing gear so it's gonna be like a medium-sized ship and uh yeah it's it's or maybe like a smaller ship like a 325 au or whatever and one more thing that you need to note is uh that they are preparing all of these like uh the unannounced vehicles uh solely because uh iae is gonna be running when was it like september i think whatever uh it's it's gonna be uh then like end of the year and you you're gonna have citizen con so they have to have ships that they're gonna sell because like they need more they always need money and um yeah community i'm just gonna skip this because that's a lot of shit and i don't care about all of this the team has also been hard at work planning and expecting all plans related to citizen con and the road to 4.0 (laughs) oh my god well like i'm laughing because if you were here since 2012 or like anything earlier than like 2020 you would know that they had a lot of roads one one of which was road to salvage one of which was road to pyro one of which was road to server mashing and every fucking time it was just a dead end like always like no exceptions so hopefully this one is gonna be an exception or maybe it's just gonna be a marketing thing and it's just gonna be whatever the community team also continued to provide gameplay training for incoming new hire staff 
like, yeah, they're going to have a bunch of new people. Uh, the team has been deep diving more options for incentivization related to the PTU in the short term, which is a much broader a variety of incentives in the mid to long term. So I have been talking about this on my channel and hopefully they're actually going to incentivize people to play the PTU, to report stuff on uh, the issue council, because like 318 is going to have a PTU that's going to last for like six months. And uh, that's going to be important because like without us uh, seeing those bugs, reporting those bugs, um, yeah, like we're going to have a really, really shitty experience. And because uh, like the devs, they're not going to know about most of those bugs because well, nobody's going to report them. And when they don't know about the bugs, they can't ignore them. They can just like they if they like if they don't know about them, they can't ignore them. So, uh, yeah, engine, the physics team made several improvements to Ray World's Ray's World. What Ray World's inter intersections which now contains a semi continuous mode to trace against rigid bodies. This makes projectile into... Dude, I, yeah, I'm just gonna wait for a raise guide to translate this because, like, whatever, dude. Like, I'm not a programmer. I don't fucking care. Good job. Next. Uh, on the renderer, Gen 12 transition continued. Dude, we really need Gen 12. Like, we needed fucking more than anything else because, like, our frame rates and all like it's just gonna be better uh hopefully with more pa <laughs> so what they said is the gen 12 transition continued with more passes being ported over including responsive aa and decal rendering in the forward stage so yeah uh do they mention when it's gonna be released hopefully 318 but we never know and there's one more thing that is well uh, important to us right now uh, also work on an improved r underscore display info continued continued is it's not finished lastly the old fps analytics buckets were replaced with an array based frame time bucket that allows for more accurate uh, profiling information okay okay whatever like as i said this is a gaming channel this is not gaming, this is just like programming and all that shit, so we don't care. So features, Arena Commander, Arena Commander features team, fixed issues and added quality of life improvements to both the Arena Commander and Star Marine modules. Improvements were also made to the implementation of doors, controllers uh, and elevators, which will result in a quicker, more robust setups in both vehicles and stations. Plans were also kicked off for new maps and gameplay experiences for Inner Commander and Star Marine. Dudes, like quality of life. Okay, so first off, if you're gonna do fucking quality of life improvements, don't make us fucking... Okay, let me switch the camera because this is important. Don't make us have to fucking... Whenever you want to equip a weapon or uh, rent a weapon to equip it, you gotta fucking click 50 times. You gotta go out of the menu, go back into the menu. Whenever you want to select a ship, you gotta fucking go in and out of the menu so you can actually select. So, please, pretty please, if you're talking about quality of life improvements, please fix, fix that. And secondly... Uh, why do we have like 15 minutes in Arena Commander? I think it's like 15, uh, maybe even less. And then like four to five kills. Like wh wh what's the point in that? And you just like uh, have to wait for a minute and a half for the server to restart. And like, yeah, that's one of the quality of life improvements. And on top of that, when you um, press tab, but I think it's not tab, I think it's caps lock uh, in, in terms of Star Citizen, uh, like the scoreboard most of the times just doesn't work. So yeah, if you're talking about quality of life improvements, please improve that. Now, features, uh, characters, and weapons. Throughout June, the features team worked on longer-term improvements uh, to the personal inventory, system base, blah, blah, blah. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, an often requested feature is the ability to move a large number of items from the inventory to another. So we added the move all button dudes Yoo 
We made it. We fucking made it, guys. We fucking made it. We did it. We fucking did it. So this may sound trivial, but it ne- <laughs> yes it does. But it needs the underlying logic to ensure the resulting service request is as small as possible and all condition logic is executed for the bulk of items being moved. So basically what they're saying here is what I thought that was the issue. Sorry, Lola. Uh, that was the issue for um, like why we didn't have move all button because yeah, uh, if you move all, the server is just gonna crash. If, if everybody can just move all from a, an inventory to another, everybody will just crash the server basically because that's a lot of items, that's a lot of uh, things that, that you gotta move. Now, what I didn't see here is a fucking control click or an alt click. I don't see that, or a shift click. I don't see that anywhere. So yeah, we're gonna scream for like, nine months or a, a year again and maybe we're gonna get a shift click and then we're gonna scream more and then we're gonna get a control click so yeah other features include being able to interact with items on the floor near the player and being able to move already equipped items from one port to another so are these item ports now? I don't know. Some of these features are already in larger scale internal testing. Ah, nice, okay. Elsewhere, previously reported fundamental changes to how actor movement synchronization is handled <laughs> were completed. This is not really that important for us. Features, gameplay. Okay, last month, gameplay features began working on the next steps for the salvage profession, which involved evaluating the possibilities for uh, the munching mechanic. Ooh. Ship tractor beams, okay, we talked about that already. And the salvage grinder. So basically, the reclaimer is gonna work, baby. The, well, there we go. The Aegis reclaimer and the Drake vouchers hull scraping feature progressed well and is currently awaiting elements from the cargo refactor. Engineering and life support are proceeding well too. Uh, okay. The team are now able to show all re- relevant items, rooms, doors, and their corresponding controls and data in an early blocked out UI screen. The initial interactive elements and the first exchangeable interactable ship items were added too. Is this it? Oh my god, this is it. It looks like shit, of course. But this is it. Let me... Can, can I, like... Please? Um, scrub atmosphere? Um, uh, this is probably where your fucking picture of a ship is gonna <laughs> be. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. So you have temperatures, you have life support on and off. Uh, yeah, this is nice. Uh, I don't understand the color coding. And I don't understand, like, why is this, like, laid out like this and not, like... But, okay, it's a work in progress. I'm not gonna be that uh, nitpicky right now. Features vehicles. Um, the team also continues to refactor, redesign... This is not important. Uh, restricted areas. Okay. Um, I mean, I know how it's gonna look in the end, but I'm not sure what we're gonna get in the meantime. I don't know what the fuck I just clicked. Uh, graphics, VFX, programming, and Planet Tech. Last month, the graphics team, like I'm, I'm, I'm falling asleep currently. Uh, yeah, Gen 12 for the render to texture system, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Not for us. We are fucking gamers. Lighting. Nope. Not, not. Oh, unless, unless they're going to talk about the ship lights and maybe giving them some actual juice because they basically don't work. But no, they haven't talked about that at all. Uh, location, Montreal, in-game branding, uh, that does not concern us at all. Narrative, uh, Q&A, tools, uh, Mighty Bridge, okay, we saw already uh, what that is. Uh, tech animation, online services, live tools, turbulent uh, web platform, UI. Throughout June, UI worked on Star Map, okay, hooking up quantum travel, on contextual menus to take the process more intuitive. They also investigated on how to show large-scale space clouds. Uh, okay, fine. 
the UI tech team worked on a few new approaches to aspect ratios to make it easier for the developers to set up resizable screens. Okay, that, that's cool. That That's actually cool. Um, they also, I mean, it's cool because I fucking understand it, but most of it <laughs> I don't fucking understand at all. And uh, yeah, like, they also upgraded the new 3D UI cards, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. Like, all of this, it, it's good for the game, but it doesn't really matter for us as gamers. Well, most of this, we're not even going to notice. It's just going to be like quality of life improvements. And then in the end, we have VFX. And, uh, yeah, like, I didn't really see that many um, uh, the gameplay loops being made, but, hey, I-, I saw one. Finally, optimizations were made to planetary ground storm effects, which had caused performance issues for some players due to a change in the planetary data that determines how the effects spawn. No, dudes, like, Jesus fucking Christ, okay, do I need to fucking tell you, and I'm gonna tell you right now, dudes... This is, like, okay, it's an issue, yeah. But you know what a bigger issue is? The bigger fucking issue is that, like, those storms will blow away your 200-ton ship. Like, they're not gonna affect you almost at all, but they're gonna blow away your ship, and it's gonna fly for fucking 10 kilometers, because, yeah... It doesn't even matter, like, in Metri 17.2, if you watch my uh, latest video, it doesn't even matter if you disengage the, the, the engines. If you cut, if you cut the engines, uh, it should stay on the ground, but it still doesn't. So, yeah, uh, that's a bigger issue. I mean, it's as big as this is. So that, that should be one of the priorities. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. I can't anymore. I'm really exhausted. This was really exhausting. And I, I'm actually sweating because it's really hot outside. And uh, I want to make another video, even though it's like 5, yeah, it's 5 a.m. And I got to edit this and I got to make another video for Sunday. So, yeah, um, fun. Thank you. Th- thank you for the fun. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. But thank you for watching and thank you to all my patrons uh, for supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel, like I know that this video was trash, but um, maybe you have learned something. At least you have laughed seeing me read this shit out for you guys. So I guess it's it's okay. But if you want to support the channel, there's going to be a link down in the description of the video. And you can support it there through Patreon. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And yeah. Uh, Don't forget to bring a towel when you're traveling through space. And then, bye. Oh my god, artificial energy, artificial power. My battery is 1% and I want to make another video. How the fuck am I gonna do that? Beep, boop, boop.